welcome to another up close video. Today's one is for Tonic's Designer's Choice number 31, which is the Spring Shadow Box. And I'm going to be going through the full die set, showing you quite a few uh, card samples and an actual um, shadow box sample. And then um, at the end, I'm going to do a little construction as well, which I'll kind of show you how the shadow box goes together. But I'm also going to show you how to make the, the kind of um, front lid or flap a door that can go on the front of it and I'm also going to turn it into a gift box rather than a shadow box as well so um, stay tuned till the end if you want to see me um, actually putting one of these together and you know running through my ideas of how I think it's going to work and stuff and how I've made a bottom to go with it and everything um, but I also wanted to say I'm really sorry I didn't have a video up for designer's choice number 30 but I didn't get sent to the set but I have bought it now um, so I'm not going to promise a up close video because because I don't think I'm going to have time to do that but I, I bought um, Designer's Choice 30 and I also didn't get hold of um, or didn't do a video on Showcase number 23 but I also bought that one so I might if I have a chance I'm not going to promise anything but if I have a chance I'm going to do a sped up video combining these two together I think um, so just to say sorry for not having a, a video for either of these two ones, but I didn't get sent them, so I didn't have a chance to actually do um, a full up-close video. But I do really love both of these, so I think I will be doing a sped-up video, just combining the two together and showing how nicely they're going to go together with each other. It'll probably be one of my ones where I get carried away and I make like three or four different cards in it, but um, that's my idea, to kind of still show you some inspiration with those two sets that I didn't get a chance to do my full videos on. But anyway, back to this up close video we've got uh, designer's choice number 31 which is the spring shadow box and you have all of the dies in here to create this gorgeous little shadow box I think it's going to be easier if I just show you the one that I've made so this is the little shadow box that I made and it folds flat. You do have to construct it in a certain way to make sure it's going to fold flat because you kind of have to construct it so it's flat to make sure it's going to fold flat because if you look the other direction it doesn't want to fold flat whereas this direction it does because that's the way that I stuck it together so um, I will kind of try and explain that when I put an actual one together but I'm not going to put together a shadow box one I'm going to show you like how to make it into a little gift box but but I really love how this one turned out um, and I've actually done something a little bit different. I cut the actual back panel from acetate. Obviously you have to then cut round it with scissors, it's not going to cut through the actual acetate. Um, but I made it so they're acetate layers so all of the butterflies and, st and clouds and stuff are actually on acetate rather than having to use like tiny little strips of acetate to make things uh, float in there I've actually made the whole panels be acetate to make it much easier and like in the very background I've used some of the raindrops on this cloud to make it look like it's raining I've got their beautiful pattern right on the very background and then I've used the hills that you get that are actually used to make the actual um, little perspective pieces of the shadow box. I've used them along the bottom and that's how it's attached. The acetate is just stuck to those. Um, but I've kind of added the gorgeous little flowers on there to create um, my little shadow box kind of scene in there. And I think it's turned out really, really sweet. And I love that it folds flat nicely. When it is folded flat though, um, you will still have to use like an A6 kind of envelope to put it in. And if you use as many layers as I have, I don't think you'd be able to send that on a normal stamp. I think you'd have to go for a large stamp because it's a bit thicker than 5mm. Um, but you could definitely just use it as something to accompany a gift and you know post it as a parcel or hand deliver it as well. But I think it's just a really sweet idea. Or you could use less inside, obviously. I did, I did use three little hills on the inside. So if you only use two, that would probably make it the perfect thickness for posting um, on a normal postage stamp. But yeah. That is the gorgeous little shadow box. So, to create the shadow box, you will need this die here, which is the front of the shadow box. And for this shadow box, or if you're turning it into a gift box, you can actually, this is the front of it, but you can actually cut another of the solid that you use for the back and make a little door to flap around the front of it as well. So, um... The front and the back are made with these two pieces, but this can also be the front, 
um, and you can have it so it sticks over the top of this and creates an extra little door and you can still have the window on the inside then as well if you wanted to protect the front of it or you know make it more of like um, a hidden kind of thing as well you can use that so that is the front and the back of the box and then you also have the side pieces but there is no bottom to the box because it is supposed to fold flat to go in an envelope but uh, later on in the video I will show you how I have turned this into the bottom of the box uh, because I want to make it into like a little gift box rather than the shadow box so um, you can actually just use this piece to turn it into a bottom you could actually just cut it but I thought this already gives you the perfect width of the box so you might as well you know die cut one of these to use it as the width um, you know and make a base from it and then this is the side piece that has the two uh, panels on here as well but if you're going to do the extra um, sort of door that goes on the front of it you will also need an extra one of these because you will uh, extra one of the sides because you'll stick all of this together just like this but then you'll cut the extra one of these and an extra one of these and you'll use that hinge to attach this front piece you can cut the back hinge off and then you'll just stick this side piece over the side of the box and I will show you that later on because I'm planning on doing that on my little gift box so um those are all of the actual main construction pieces um, but if you're going to do the shadow box you do also get this little hill die now all of the hills are obviously it's just one die so they're all going in the same direction and I did actually just use them all like that on mine but you could flip them if you wanted to and you weren't fussed about showing the back of the card or anything um, but you can also just cut a piece of card to the right width um, of these little score lines or um, just use an extra one of these and you can actually cut a hill in there as well. Um, I was using this as an extra piece, um, well it's going to be on the one I construct later, but that bottom piece that I've ripped off you could actually have stuck that onto here and made a hill or I could just use you know the width of this and, and have this piece poking up to be one of the elements that I stick stuff to as well. So you don't have to just use the hill but you do need these pieces to create that shadow box kind of effect because it's got the glue tabs on here but you can alter this to be whatever you want it to be so it doesn't have to just be that hill shape you can add an extra bit of card or you also have um, the gorgeous little fence that you can stick on there as well and on my one I actually um, did two fences and you know added a bit extra so that it would go all the way across as well so that's like the piece that turns it into this shadow box kind of effect then as well as all of that, you have got the decorative pieces to decorate this. So I didn't use them on the sides of this one, but I will use them on the sides of the one that I'm going to assemble later. But you have these gorgeous little panels um, that you can just cut from pattern paper or a coloured cardstock, or you can use them both together to get that beautiful pattern. And these bits are also perfect for your card making, which I will show you as well. I've got an idea using these on a card. But that is designed to be um, a decorative side panel on here. Then this piece in the back of this, you can see I've actually used it in the back of my shadow box. I cut um, the solid back piece from white and I cut the two of these together from white. And then I just used, I think it was 425 and 427 and um, the tonic pens to colour them. Um, so you've got like the lighter blue on top of the darker blue to make just a sky background. But it's got that beautiful pattern in there. And this die I think is my favourite from the set because not only can you um, use this beautiful pattern like this but you can cut this beautiful pattern into your card straight into it and then flip it round and cut it the other way and you get this gorgeous because um, this flower completely lines up and then you get this gorgeous like pointy bit here um, lining up in both directions I did also notice on here as well there is a hole missing it's not completely symmetrical I don't know if that was on purpose or whether they just missed it off but if you look here there's a hole a little hole just there on every corner but not there and I only noticed that because I had cut it once and then I twisted it round to cut it again and I noticed that the extra hole cut out because I'd obviously inlaid it over the top and cut it again so um, there is actually a little hole missing which I thought was quite funny so I, I think maybe it's an accident that they've missed that off but um, it makes it more of a unique design but 
as well as uh, using it like that, it makes a fantastic stencil. So you can just cut one out, whether you actually use the outside edge or you just cut it into a large piece of card perfect for stenciling whether you are ink blending or on one of the cards that I done, I've done I actually coloured through all of the apertures and I'll show you that later on as well so I just use my alcohol pens to colour through each of the apertures and then not only can you use that as a stencil you can save all of the pieces so you can save all of these little pieces and you could either take one of these, place it onto your card and then stick these through the apertures and then you can peel this off and you'll have that perfect pattern where you've placed all the pieces back in or you can just freehand your pattern using all of these little pieces. Um, if you watched my, I think it was a techniques video where I had like a whole swatch book of the Nouveau gems and in that they had the water droplet gems which were this kind of shape um, so any of those kind of pattern ideas that I showed you with those you can use with these sort of ones they make perfect little flowers you can use them as raindrops like I showed you in the back of that um, the in the little cloud in the back of there although you do actually get a little die that is designed to be little raindrops but you can definitely use all these fall away pieces to be larger raindrops and stuff as well I just really love that die I think it's just such a, a beautiful pattern I'm kind of hoping they bring that out in a larger um like die that would cut out a whole background or in some kind of like stencil form with this gorgeous flower repeated all over it but I really love that design um, and I think this is a fantastic die from this set um, to use for all sorts of different things whether it is decorating your actual little shadow box or the gift box I'm going to show you later or for using on your cards as well I think it's a really lovely die then you also get these two dies which go along with the kind of shape of the aperture oh and actually i forgot to mention this this because the aperture cuts out you get this um fall away piece and i've used this on a few different cards uh, cutting it from vellum cutting it from white card on one of the cards i did i actually uh, temporarily attached this to the front of the card just using a loop of removable tape and then i ink blended over it and you were left with the aperture of this shape as well and then I also reused the front panel piece that had got the ink blending on as well and it looks fantastic so this piece that falls away is also brilliant for different kinds of uh, techniques you could even cut this multiple times out of different colors and you know make a, t a whole overall background or this could be a gift tag as well but you do also get these two dies in there which are designed to be little gift tags as well which are just a slightly different shape to that one they've just got um, the sort of point on the bottom cut off of them but you've got beautiful little extra gift tags that could be a design feature for um, a card you know building up a design or you can just use them as beautiful little gift tags as well or even for this gift box idea that I'm doing you cut multiple gift tags and put them inside it and give it as a gift as well so um, really sweet little gift tags then you have tons of little elements to decorate your little um, shadow box so I briefly showed you the little fence earlier but you've got a gorgeous little fence with some foliage um, running along it as well so you could just cut this from white like I did or you could cut it from white and colour that foliage that goes along it um, or you could cut it from like a metallic colour as well and make it uh, more of like a raw iron fence or something maybe a black metallic or um, silver or something and matte silver would look really nice too so you've got the little fence um, you've also got these two sentiments, which I didn't end up using in the end. Um, but this one says, best wishes, and it's one of the little debossing sentiments. And this one says, just for you. So if you love your hot foiling, give them a try in your hot foiling um, machine. See if you can get them to give a, a good impression for your hot foiling. Or if not, you just run them through on your normal die cutting sandwich and they will deboss into your card and then you can either use mousse over the top of them, you could um, trace them with a fine pen or um, if you cut them into satin mirror card, that kind of gives the best sort of look. Or if you're gonna use them just with your normal Craft Perfect, deboss them onto the smooth side, not the textured side, and you'll get a much better impression with those as well. Then, all of the rest of the little elements here, you've got a bush, which, um, you know, is quite useful for building out the scene, and I have used them on the front of my little shadow box here, I've used multiples there. You've got loads of little clouds, a little selection of three of them, so you've got all of the perspective for using on your different layers, which is nice. Use the larger ones in the foreground, smaller ones in the background. You have got a butterfly, which again, always um, useful to have. 
um, you can never have too many different butterflies and this one's got a nice little um, deboss line down its body so it folds in half really nicely to give that dimension then you have got um, a couple of little bits of foliage so you've got this one that cuts um, sort of like a leafy stem this one that cuts kind of like a leafy stem but with hearts on the end of them and I didn't use this as foliage but you can use your scissors to snip bits of this off and it makes perfect bodies for the butterfly so if you look on here all of my little butterflies have got a little body from that little um, heart kind of frondy piece and it kind of gives them a little head with the heart piece which I thought was a really sweet idea then you have this die which kind of has the bubble and then you can sit three different flowers on top of it so this could be like a bush with three different flowers on I did just use the flowers individually and put them on the other bushes so you've got um, that bush there and these were the three flowers that I put on here um, then you've also got this gorgeous flower which is on a stem and this flower is bigger than this one so you can layer these on top of this if you want to and build it up. You've got this beautiful little flower, I love this little one, I'm sure there's been uh, one similar actually. Yes, I think it's actually the same looking at it. I've got one of those little houses that was, um, I think it was a designer's choice, um, the little kind of cottagey house. I can't remember what it was called, if I remember I'll put it up. Um, here but I think that's exactly the same flower that's in that one so um, I really love that little flower I remember liking that before actually but it's a gorgeous like little daisy kind of flower then you've got this sort of one with um, flat uh, petals on them as well it's more like little squared petals and then this one actually cuts little raindrops for you so you can use those to coming out of one of the clouds or you can use the fall away pieces from um, this main die and talking of fall away pieces that is what I've used for the centres of all of my flowers so you get all of these gorgeous little circles that fall away and because I'd cut this from white I could just use my alcohol pens to colour them a gorgeous yellow colour and then I've just used all the different sizes for the different flowers so you'll see this kind of daisy flower back there and I've used the three different sizes for um, the little centres of the flowers and I just think it looks so beautiful it gives that really cartoony kind of feel to it and I really love the look of that so um, I will just put all of these dies away and then I'll come back to show you my samples that I've done and then we'll move on to that construction as well so you've seen what the actual little shadow box is supposed to look like from the one that I was showing you earlier and how it's supposed to fold flat and everything but there's just so many gorgeous elements that you can use on your actual card making that I wanted to do um, the idea that I was kind of explaining earlier where I had drawn through, you can kind of see the, the red around these smaller petals and stuff where I'd drawn through all of this design um, and then I decided to stick an actual die cut over the top that I had die cut into the panel and this was cutting this one one way and then flipping it and cutting it again the other way. It doesn't cut much more the second time it cuts because it's only really cutting um, these little bits along here but it recut that hole that was missing um, in that uh, specific position that I showed you earlier but it also gives you a much more um, believable shape that you know that it, this is for an actual card making die rather than it being um, a panel from a box having that double ended shape it just makes it look more like it was meant to be used on a card not that it was a panel from a box having a straight bottom to it so um, I cut that panel straight into a, a white rectangle but then I decided I wanted to do this idea of, of actually having specific colour um, in the places of the pattern so I just took um, a piece of white card and placed this die cut over the top and then just coloured whatever of the pattern I wanted through it and I could remove this and check and see if I wanted to add more and I'd, I'd only added the ready uh, kind of colours to the central flower and so I placed it back on and decided to colour these uh, further ones out as well um, in the colour and then um, I decided to cut uh, this die which is the aperture one from vellum so that I got the central section from vellum and I used a white gel pen to give it a little bit of white stitching around there and then I finished it off with a happy birthday sentiment and then to tie the black in I did the black um, faux stitching around the edge of this shape to kind of really emphasize that kind of shape giving these bits a curved corner and stuff and you know going with the point but then I felt like 
it looked too plain so I had some of these leftover die cuts from when I was die cutting all the bits and pieces to make the shadow box because I'd cut four of everything and then only used three of everything really on this one so um, I kind of made it so that this matched so I've gone with all the same colours, I was already using the same colours for colouring in this design and so I've just added a few of the same flowers but with this one I layered up that flower on the, onto there um, what I was saying with the, the dies before, how the, the little three of flowers um, they fit nicely on top of that slightly larger flower I've used the centres um, from you know the waist from that gorgeous pattern because I ended up cutting that pattern three times, one to use as a stencil, one for this card and one for this and I might have actually cut another one for the one that I've prepped as well um, so I had plenty of all of these little bits and pieces to use as the the central sections and then after I'd done that I kind of felt like it needed a little bit more balance so I brought in one of the little orange butterflies and um, the same kind of colorway that I'd used on here and again I had cut it a little body from that little heart frond piece as well so it looks like it's got a little heart head and then a little body coming down as well and I really love how that turned out to begin with I wasn't sure sure if it was going to work as nicely as I wanted to because before I added all these elements I felt like oh maybe I shouldn't have done those stitches on there it just it wasn't um working really nicely and I was kind of like oh I think I ruined it by doing the stitches and I didn't want to have to start over again um and then I thought to add these extra elements in and just doing that really like brought it together I think it's because I muted the color with the vellum so then the black felt really harsh um but adding the the more uh, concentrated colour back on top again I think it balanced it nicely so I really like how that one turned out and um, I love the shape of all of these just that vellum shape that's there I just really love that shape um, and yeah it's just really lovely and adding the little flowers on there as well and that gorgeous little daisy one I really like that one and the little butterfly as well so that's the first one that kind of matches the shadow box so you know if you were giving this as a gift you could put this in the same envelope and then you know obviously you'd post it with a larger stamp on there um, but you could actually give them both together as a cute little set then um, this is the one that I used the waist pieces so I had all of these bits and pieces left left over from cutting um, multiples of that main shape and I didn't want to waste them and I was thinking of doing the idea where I just place them all back in with this pattern you know using it as a, a negative placeholder but then I thought well anybody can do that really I, I don't really need to show you how to do that um, but it would be nice to give you a little bit of inspiration of how to freehand use these bits and pieces so I've done this kind of flower here where you've got the six petals you start with the two opposite each other and then you fit the other two in and how I did this piece this was just a random scrap of um, the craft perfect double sided adhesive sheets that I had and it was straight on one side and it had a wonky side on the other so I just stuck it onto my favourite rectangle size and just started placing these little flowers on so you've got three of that main flower and a little bit of it uh, another one poking off down here then I used some of the smaller elements and I did uh, two opposite each other and then two opposite each other of the medium size and then I brought the smaller size in to fill in the in-betweens as well and then I also brought in some of the little um, circles too just to fill in the background as well and then to give it more um, interest so it wasn't just you know the white with a colour of glitter to finish like to fill in the rest of the adhesive I came in with the um, luminous lily pad hexagons which came out in the rose garden colour trend um, I remember saying that I really loved the look of these when I did my colour trend unboxing video for that um, and I still really love the look of them and then I combined them with the Enchanted Eden Glitter which I have a feeling this was a kit exclusive colour um, so you might not have this one but I know a lot of you who watch my videos are kit subscribers so you probably do have this colour um, and I just think those two go really really nicely together and give that gorgeous like minty greeny and then the uh, hexagons have got like almost that aurora borealis kind of finish as well so there's a bit of purple in there too but I just thought that would go really really nicely with this um, and then I just folded up uh, I think it's about four layers of some chawl and put that um, at a slight diagonal across there because this line's already wonky why not make an extra wonky line um, and then I just did just for you as my little dymo label sentiment on there as well and I really love how that one turned out and that is literally just using waste pieces 
and some glitter and stuff from your stash and I just really love how that turned out um, I think it looks really lovely and even if you didn't have any chewel you could just put a piece of um, vellum across there I think vellum with um, little white gel pen stitches across it would look really lovely too um, to kind of just highlight where the sentiment is so that is the second card sample and then I have two more um, that are both using the same colour scheme which I'm really into this colour scheme at the moment it's Salvage Patina and Mermaid Lagoon Distress Oxide and they just look so lovely together um, this was the first one that I made and this was what I was saying about taking um, a loop of removable tape, so whatever kind of removable tape you use for placing your dies onto your cardstock, you just make a loop of it, stick it on the back of here, and then just press it onto your background piece. Then you do all of your ink blending over the top of it, making sure to ink blend this as well. And then I took this piece and keeping this in place, um, did some stenciling with this. So you can see I've done it with the lighter colour and the darker colour. And for the darker colour I was focusing it just on this central flower to build up the design um, and then you end up with uh, the actual aperture left in this piece and you also have the coloured piece as well. Um, now I didn't want to use the coloured piece then on another card because I already had multiple cards going here and I thought well it looks really lovely being placed back onto here and because I'd been cutting multiples of those apertures out I had extra of the this shape so I offset it down a little bit to show the white of the actual aperture and you can see how crisp it was next to the ink blending. That is actually just flat. That's the white card that I ink blended onto. Um, and then I obviously wanted to match that on the other side but the, the rest of the aperture is hidden underneath this main central piece. So I just took another one and moved it out as much as I had moved this main piece down um, so that you got the white shadow on the bottom of it as well. And I think that just looks really cool because it kind of um the pattern is continuous across because it was inked at the same time but you've got that white there to really make it stand out rather than just doing that um what's it called there's a technique is it called like uh i can't remember what the technique's called where you kind of have um something hidden within it you normally uh, have your background and then you die cut something out of it and then you raise the die cut up and it's kind of hidden within there I can't remember what it's called but it's that kind of effect but because you put the um, you know you've left the aperture sort of shape under there moved it down and put another one on there it kind of makes it stand out more and then um, for an extra little element I cut the main panel piece so this piece but I cut it from vellum and then I just ripped did I rip? No, I cut. I cut around it, mainly focusing on cutting around this big flower that's in there as well. And then I just layered up that vellum on top of there. And I think it just looks really lovely. I think it just adds an extra soft element. And because I used the actual die cut of this to do my stenciling, it matches perfectly. And this doesn't look like you've used a die cut to stencil. It looks like you've used a stencil to stencil. Um, and I love it when you can get dies that, that do that. They actually give... Um, the look of that you've used a stencil in there as well whereas this is actually just two dies that I've used on here just the the main focal one and the interior piece that's technically waste that falls out of the frame portion of the shadow box so I really love this card um, and this would be a fantastic one for batch making as well actually especially if you were making a few of the shadow boxes and you had lots of these pieces that had fallen out of that front aperture as well I really love how this one turned out and I just finished it with a little Dymo sentiment on there that says thank you I've used some of the silver crystal nouveau glitter drops just in the background and actually my bottle is getting to the end and it's quite funny because some of them came out just as mostly clear can you see there's hardly any glitter in that one it just came out as mostly clear um, and I quite like the um the mixture of that it kind of looks like I, I took out my morning dew as well and mixed them in but um, it was actually just coming to the end of the bottle of the silver crystals and some of it didn't have as much um, glitter mixed into it but I love the look of that um, and then I just used some white um, like organza ribbon and tied a little bow on there just it's really like um, a lovely soft feel and I thought this blending going off into nothing is really nice and soft and the vellum pattern on here as well gives a soft feel so I thought that ribbon would go really nicely and then the next card is 
um, you know, I love the colour scheme of this one so much that I just replicated it onto this card. And this is, again, um, using the same two colours for the ink blending, starting with, like, the, the darker Mermaid Lagoon down here and blending into the salvage patina, and then using that same um, panel to do my ink blending to get that beautiful pattern on there. But then I've just taken five of that side panel piece and put them along the bottom of the card in the darker area. Now because I had done some of this ink blending down here with the pattern, I was thinking I might have to back these onto like the iridescent uh, marina mist mirror card or something so that they had something pretty behind them and you weren't getting distracted by the pattern in the ink blending but actually you can't really see it that much so I was quite pleased with that that I could just stick the white ones on top um, and then again I finished off with some of that organza ribbon because it goes really nicely um, giving like a, a subtle soft kind of feel and then I've used um, another Dymo label on there as well as my little sentiment that says just for you and again the silver crystal nouveau drops and i just think it just turned out so lovely um i really love how all of these ones turned out um, and i think this is such a a lovely little set as well so i'll move all these out of the way and then we'll move on to my kind of construction which isn't properly going to be the construction for the shadow box it's going to be like a different idea of how to use this little box Okay, so I have cut a lot of pieces out here because I want to make this um, a little gift box that has a bottom to it, so it's not like the um, the shadow box, but also so it has the flap on the front of it. So this is going to be a window that looks into the box, but there's also going to be the flap that comes over the top of this, and I also want to line it, and I want to have the pretty patterns on the outside as well. So I might put this together in a peculiar way, but that's because I want to hide the glue tabs, and because I'm lining the inside, um, that's going to help with hiding the glue tabs, but um, in certain areas I'm going to need to put specific glue tabs together first to enable me to hide them easily so um let's uh walk through how i've made the base for this box first so i have taken this largest die um, and you can tell which one's the right one because it is the same size as the aperture die and i've taken one of a spare one of these and i have scored it here i don't know if you can see those scores um I've used the Tonic Super Trimmer because the scorer on that um, that comes with it, the little grey blade that comes with it, is the scorer blade. Um, it gives really fine lines. If I had used my um, glide folder or my card creaser, they give... Um, okay, that's actually quite fine. But if you use it with... Um, with your actual scoreboard they tend to give a really thick line like uh, this outside one here and it's not as easy to be accurate but because this is kind of like um, a small make I wanted it to be really accurate so basically I want to use this portion of this and for now I have scored at um, one centimeter and then three centimeters because the base of this box is three centimeters and so that is going to be a glue tab the base of the box and then this will be another glue tab and that's given me this little piece here which I have folded to give me my actual three centimeter width base here but because I have got the um, aperture in the front panel of this we're going to have to cut this glue tab down so that it doesn't show through this little bit of the aperture so the next step is going to be to move on to this aperture now because I'm going to line the inside of this box I want a second one of these to hide where I have stuck acetate onto here um, and I did just literally use a scrap of acetate you can see it's all off at weird angles and stuff but I want a second one of these to hide the inside and because this is going to hide the inside and line it, we want to make sure we've already stuck the base on so it's going to get hidden between those two layers. So, um, I've already stuck the acetate on here because I wanted it to make sure it had dried properly. Um, so I'm going to trim off the excess, just undercutting around the edge with your scissors works really nicely. And also when you're sticking the acetate on, only put your glue right round the aperture and then you can easily get your scissors underneath to cut off any of that excess. Um, which is my kind of top tip for sticking your acetate on. So then we want to stick our glue tab onto there, but if I line that up with there and show you, you can see that bit of the glue tab there. So right in that central section, we can either trim the entire glue tab down, or because we know exactly where that bit's going to be, we can just cut a bit smaller 
like that and then we know that we're not going to be able to see that and then we can take some red liner tape and add it onto that glue tab this construction might be a little bit longer than a normal construction that I would do because I haven't actually put any tape on anything yet because um, I kind of wanted to do it all together uh, whilst I'm showing you so that I can explain where I'm putting stuff um, but I might as well put the tape on the other side of this one whilst we're doing this so we're going to do that and we can trim the excess off of here and trim that excess because we don't need that so we've got our piece with the acetate in and then we want to stick this onto here like so and line that up and then you might think oh, okay now we can just stick this straight on but we've got side panels and we want to hide the side panel joins as well and obviously tonic are fantastic and they already think about all of this and they've made it so that these side panels don't interfere with the window because we were making that one ourselves we had to kind of fiddle with it because you know we're not as genius as tonic making the side panels not interfere um so we need to put our red liner tape on these ones now and i'm going to use three millimeter for these because um they're a narrower little tab so we can put tape on all of these ones then uh, we want to trim off any excess tape that's hanging over the ends and we also want to pre-crease or pre-fold all of the score lines on these as well so we can just fold that and then I, I like to take my glide folder and press along that because I'm using 300 GSM white card so um, it's relatively thick so you need to make sure that those fold lines are nice and crisp to make sure you get a clean kind of finish to your box. Okay so now we've got um, the base stuck on now we want to stick these on so that um, we can then stick the final back panel on and hide all of those glue tabs that are in there. So we want to make sure the pointy bit is towards the top of the box because we want the flat bit to go along the bottom. I'm not bothering with glue tabs along this bottom portion. You could if you wanted to, but I feel like just having it on the front and the back is going to hold it enough for just making it a small little gift box. Because, I mean, I don't think anything too heavy is going to fit in here, so you don't really have to worry too much about the weight of the, the gift and stuff. And then we can stick the other one on the other side. Okay, so now you can see how this box is going to come together and there'll be another side on there. But we want to line that inside piece. So we can take this one and we want to stick that directly over the top so that we're going to hide all of those joins. So we can just take some glue. I think glue's easier for this because you've got like little fiddly bits and you want it to be nicely stuck all over, like right up to the point and stuff. It'll be more... Uh, fiddly to cut tape to go right up to those points then it will be just to put a bit of glue on here and I'm going to tap that off a little bit because we don't want it smudging onto the acetate and then I'm lining up this bottom corner and then I'm also looking at where the edge of that aperture is going to line up as well and then we can press that into place and you can see how that really nicely hides um, all of those glue tabs that we've already put on so that's going to be the front of the box then we've got to think about what's going to go on next so I want to line the inside here with this spearmint colour and the glue tabs aren't on this piece so I can line this one now whilst the box is um, kind of more open so that it'll be easier for us. So we need to take off the glue tabs because we don't need them. We just want to cover that central section. So I'm just going to cut like a hair inside that um, glue tab. So you end up with a, a straight edge and you can't see any of that little um, divot from the score line. And then that should fit nicely inside there. If it doesn't, you can just trim a tiny bit more off. But I think that's going to fit nicely in there. And then we can trim these two glue tabs off of here. Okay, so now we can line those two sides of the inside. Now the reason why I'm lining this is mostly because 
there's an aperture so you're going to see on the inside and right on the back of the inside you're going to see these glue tabs stuck to it so when I was doing the um, the actual shadow box I actually stuck these side glue tabs on the back and then I stuck another one over the back so that you can't see the glue tabs on the inside there on this one though on the front I stuck them behind this front panel because it doesn't matter if you can see them there because you're not looking at it from that direction you're looking at it from this direction so think about that when you're putting yours together but I don't want to confuse you by going on about that one whilst I'm doing this so um, I'll come back to talk about that one at the end of how it kind of goes together so then we can stick the other one on here then we want um, a back on this obviously so to put the back on we want to place that on this glue tab here and we also want to stick that in like that basically just as we were doing and then all of those glue tabs we can slide another one in there that we've die cut so this one doesn't need too much thought for thinking which way round things go because we haven't got the aperture to interfere with so it doesn't matter how big that uh, glue tab that we made for the base of the box is and then we can bring this around here and we want to line up that bottom and then bring this up and line up the side panel as well and do the same on this side it's easier on the other side I think on this side I mean because you've already started to put the box together you can line up the base of it and then line up the side so now you can see we have the two sides that we already lined and then this piece needs lining because if you look from the front you can see the glue tabs, the bottom and the sides. So we've got another piece of that spearmint coloured cardstock and we can add this on and slide that down the inside and stick that into position. And we can press right on those um, corner creases with your glide folder as well so it gets it right down onto the actual glue tabs in the corners and then now that looks so much better because all you can see is that spearmint you can line the bottom as well if you want to I just haven't thought about that um, but you can definitely line the bottom too and because we stuck this on the back and then stuck that in there we've got a pretty back to it now as well now I want to show you how to do the little front panel so we need an extra one of these spines and remember to do this before you decorate the outside because you know we're going to have a panel to stick onto this and if you then decide later that you want this panel to go on the front you're going to have to recut the panels to go on the sides and stuff um, but you want an extra one of the sides and an extra one of the the large uh, back panel pieces to make the the front of this and for this one I am going to line the inside of this with some iridescent mirror card so I've already cut a second one of those from the iridescent mirror card as well. So we can now take this one glue tab here and we can sandwich that glue tab between this front white one and that back iridescent uh, mirror card one. And we can just stick some tape on here. It doesn't matter that we're using a wider tape here because um, we're sandwiching it between. So it doesn't really matter if there's an overhang of tape on there probably didn't matter in the other instance either as well but anyway so we've now got that little piece there and we can stick this one lining up the bottom and lining up the straight edge uh, the cut edge with the score line on there so we've now got this hingy kind of piece and then we want to stick the iridescent mirror card on the inside as well now there's something to think about you know how I just stuck that one on the inside there and I just did wet glue all the way around the edge and scribbled across the middle? If you do that with mirror card, sometimes, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes, and it's always when you don't want it to happen, um, you will then start to see that scribble because the moisture will get through into the card and it will mess up the finish on the front. Um, and to be honest, it doesn't particularly matter because we are going to put a decorative panel on there. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to use um, tape to stick this on so that we don't have that problem and I think to get that point stuck down I'm just going to put a piece in there like that and then 
we oh, I will add a bit of tape to this side even though we shouldn't really need it because I've already stuck it on there but we've got all of that taped up now we can take this bit of tape off of here and then we can take these bits off as well and then we can just line this up it's very best to go from this um, uh, hinge side so if we line up against we want to go straight along the bottom so that I'm matching and we want to go straight up that side as well and make sure the points match too and then we can just press that into place so we've now got our like extra front panel that's going to hide that aperture and make it like this um, but now we need to attach it onto the side of the box and you can see here we don't need that extra glue tab so we can just use our long bladed pair of scissors or you can use your guillotine or paper trimmer just to cut that off and then you can actually make that like an extra little cover to go over the front of this and we'll just simply be able to stick that on with some double sided tape in a second as well but while we've got this separate so we can press on it nice and firmly we might as well decorate this with our panels that we want to decorate with so for this I've got the smaller shape and then the actual decorative panel that has the smaller shape around the outside edge of it um, I'm going to stick that on the front and then on the inside because that is already the iridescent mirror card I'm going to stick that on there but to make it look a little bit different this is the one that I ripped that bottom piece off of the die cut so that is actually going to stick on the bottom of there and then we'll stick that one over the top of it just to make it look a little bit different so um, this because we're hiding because uh, sorry because the glue is going on this bit and this will be what is showing it doesn't matter about that being iridescent mirror card but you could definitely use double sided tape if you want to be sure and you're not going to get that funny effect with glue and mirror card but it shouldn't affect it because we're doing it this kind of way round and then I want to take my fine tip glue to put this one on and if you go all the way around the edge first and then I'd like to do little dollops everywhere and obviously right in the centre as well the more you do the better it's obviously going to stick down but you don't have to sit here for like 10 minutes trying to cover every single little area because by the time you get to the end of it the first few blobs are going to be dry and then it won't stick properly anyway so and I like to tap the excess glue on my hand so that it doesn't squeeze out especially if you're sticking onto mirror card you don't really want it squeezing out Okay, so that's the inside of our little door, and then on the outside of the door we're going to put this one. So, we want to do this. Same thing again. Sorry if this is a bit boring. I know some of you ask, or a couple of people have asked, why I uh, tap the glue on the back of my hand. Some people figure it out and they're like, oh, that's genius tapping the glue because, you know, you're not going to get all of that excess squeezing out. And some people really wonder why on earth I tap off the glue on my hand. Um, but it is just so that it doesn't squeeze out. And I kind of just do it all the time now for whatever I'm sticking because um, it's most important for um, mirror card and stuff because you really don't want that um, oozing out onto there. But I tend to just do it all the time now just so I'm in the habit of it. So that is the front panel and I might stick that on with some 3D foam actually and while we're sticking these panels together I have done the exact same thing for the side panels so I want the front and the side to match so I've used the same you know like with the actual panel and then the back piece is flush with the edge of it so we can do these ones as well. And uh, you know where I was lining the inside of the side panels and I decided to actually use the side panels. You could just use um, this piece if you wanted to but it's not going to completely cover the glue tabs which is why I went with cutting extra of the side panels and trimming off the glue tabs off the edges because um, that's going to completely cover the inside of the box then. Whereas if you just use these panels you would still be able to see the glue tabs and it's kind of a little bit um, redundant putting them over the top because you're using them to hide it but it's not really hiding it because you can still see them so that's why I decided to actually cut extra of the inside panels 
So I think I'm going to stick all of these on with um, 3D foam. So let's take all of them, flip them over. Uh, this 3D foam that I like to use, whenever you see me using this wide roll, it's only a millimetre thick, this one. I really like this because it just adds like a tiny bit of um, depth to your little panel sticking out, but it doesn't really add too much bulk to it. It kind of just basically, you know when a die cut, uh, you come around the edge of it and it kind of bevels the card down? It basically just fills in that gap, really, and... Um, just makes it a little bit more three-dimensional than just sticking it flat and I really love the look of that so if you ever see me with this wide roll that's uh, the thickness of the tape just one millimeter thick whereas usually it's I think the standard is like two millimeters thick um, some do three millimeters thick which I just think is a little bit too thick for um, certain things I mean if you've already been using one and two millimeters on a project then you know go for three millimeters as well because you might as well have the variation in the height but um, a lot of the time I go for one or two millimeter thickness if, if anybody wanted to know that so I'm just going to stick that on the front then we want to stick one of these on the side because um, this is then going to be stuck to the side of the box and then the other one we want to put on the other side of the actual box as well so we can put that one on there and then we just want to put some double sided tape on the back of this so I'll just get some wider red liner tape now this side isn't going to perfectly line up with the side of the box because um, we didn't leave like an extra little gusset for that coming around the front and we have just stuck extra panels on here as well so we want to make sure the front lines up nicely but then the side of the box is going to leave a little gap there but I don't think that looks too bad if you were worried about that you could then make your own um, glue tab to attach this onto um, and faff around with it that way and make it so that there was extra room so that this came out further because you can see the side panels, obviously, they're just going straight round here, but this one, we need that little extra couple of millimetres because of the, the door coming round the front. But you can definitely do that if you want to. So we can line that up and then stick that on. So now we've got the front of our little shadow box here and um, you can do this exact same thing with the shadow box so so ignore that I've put a base in this one but this door could be on this one to hide the front of it as well depending on whatever um, you want to put in there um, you know if there was photographs in there or something you might want to have it as like an extra element for them to open you could have a little pocket in here and fold up a note and it can be part of a present as well um, you, you know this torn piece that I've put here this could be on the outside of the pattern and then you could fold up a note into quarters and, and poke it inside there as well so you know loads of different ways of uh, utilising this kind of design but for me I wanted to make this a little gift box like this and I have cut extra panels or have I just got that one extra panel that I could put on the back if I wanted to make that green as well but I don't mind it being white actually or you could also put the same panel on the back of it as well and I was also thinking um maybe I should have done that before I stuck the panels on but um you could put a ribbon going across there and make it into like a little mini handbag kind of thing as well but I just wanted to show how that you can make a base for this and turn it into actually more of a box or you could do the exact same thing as this and just add this front panel on here as well now I wanted to say about um this as well because you know I was saying right at the beginning of this video probably like an hour ago now um, how you want it to lay flat and the way you get it to work like this is you, you have your front and you have the sides on here as well you want to stick all of these hills to the one side first and then when you're putting this together you can fold it like this flip it over to the back make sure you can see all of these glue tabs and then you can fold this side down and catch all of those glue tabs and if you do it that way you're going to get it to fold flat I mean you can make it fold flat the other direction if you want to but um, as long as you make it so it folds flat in one direction like that and that's how you stick it together you know it's going to be able to fold flat but if you don't care about it folding flat you can definitely just um, you know put them in from the bottom you can just go oh I need an extra one in there and then you can just add it in from the bottom as well because as I was saying earlier these 
acetate pieces that I cut out using that largest panel, they are only stuck to the hillsides. So it is only those little glue tabs on the side of the hills that are holding that in place. The acetate is stuck to the back of the hill, but um, the only part actually attaching it to the shadow box is still those little glue tabs, which is exactly how you would make it if you didn't make the panels out of acetate. And when you are uh, making them out of acetate, I think it's pretty neat cutting across here. But the way I did it was you cut that die into the acetate. And if you've ever cut acetate before, this is um, actually packaging acetate. You know when you get your dies on the packaging, I saved that. Um, and I actually used that to cut these out of, so it's quite thick. So if you cut them normally, you just run it through on your normal die cutting sandwiches. It debosses into the acetate. It, it pretty much will never cut through unless you have like a miracle die cutting machine that's fantastic at cutting things like that. Um, but it, with a thin die like the tonic ones, it's not going to cut through. But what you can do is you can take your paper trimmer or your guillotine. I was using my guillotine to cut these three sides. So you can just line it up against that little sort of divot piece. And you do want to cut them slightly smaller anyway. So you want to go um, on the actual acetate sort of inside that divoted line from where the cut line is. Um, you can get these ones really straight with a paper trimmer or a guillotine. And then you only have this side to cut. And it's really simple to follow along with your scissors, especially the Tim Holtz mini snips because they've got that um, serrated uh, blade on them. Um, and you can literally just follow them along and trim off that top piece. But if you didn't want to do that, um, still deboss the die but just use your paper trimmer to cut them across the top if you wanted to. Actually, you'd still you'd be able to see that through the window. Maybe don't do that. Unless you cut them at a diagonal like that, actually, and just missed out the curve, but cut them straight like that, perhaps. That could be a way of doing it. But just experiment if you want to do that kind of idea. But if you don't want to, but you still want things floating in here, you can just use strips of acetate. I've shown that on um, other different projects before. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but... Um, I have shown that before where you just stick a tiny little, oh actually I can think of one, the um, the Pot of Happiness showcase where I did the um, the moon and the planets and the little alien monster thing, um, I put some of the stars on little wiggly bits of acetate, you can definitely do that to make them um, come off of this scene as well if you'd rather, or you could even um, make more like solid patterns, actually because you have those... Um, those tags, you see the way they've placed the tags inside this aperture, if you were clever with your placement you could place these, so this is the first one and then um, the largest panel cut with that tag out of the centre is the second one and cut with that tag out of the centre is the third one, it would make like one of those tunnel books going through um, and you'd have like the kind of like invertage, you'd have the bigger one, the smaller one, the smaller one looking back, that would be a cool idea as well actually. So have a play with that too. I think that would work well. Um, yeah, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this up-close video looking at Tonic Designer's Choice number 31, which is the Spring Shadow Box. Hopefully I've given you plenty of inspiration um, in this video of how you can use this... Um, gorgeous die set whether you want to make what it's actually intended to make um, and you could add this little door on the front of it whether you want to make your own bottom from one of these main pieces and turn it into more like a little gift box um, you could even make a top to it as well if you wanted to um, and just have it resting further down I'm not sure how you get into it then but you could do a top to it as well if you wanted to or whether you just want to use all of the beautiful elements to create some cards as well I think it's a really lovely versatile um, designer's choice and I think this is one of the most reasonable of the online launches so it's um you know a pretty decent price to get all of this sort of versatility out of it as well so if you are interested in getting hold of this month's designer's choice I will leave affiliate links um to the set below my video as well and also on my blog post too and I really do appreciate you taking the time to use my links as well so thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next video bye <laughs>